possible means of, you know, getting by. So, yeah, it could work, be fine. Blue has been assigned a particularly interesting spot on the lower ground floor. So I've been given what is like an old staircase, a bit of a storage room, but then also I have access to the outside here. Looks like it's mostly inhabited by pigeons. Yeah, well, it's a, it's kind of a, a, an alternative space, isn't it? So it's not your typical kind of um, white cube scenario. I wouldn't say no. I, I can't have this kind of derelict space. I'm, I'm up for it, you know. But if I had one of the kind of empty rooms upstairs as well, that that could work as well. No time for messing around. The show's on in a week. Roisin has had to make a decision. I just had to go and reorder a piece of work that cost, like, just cost me my rent money. Oh, okay. You can put the yeah. gas in afterwards. Yeah, this is actually pink. Oh, wow. Gas. How did you afford it? Oh, don't ask me that. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Very stressful, Jesus. What you know, if um, you know, if your work is dumped and you have to reproduce something that you don't really want to invest, that kind of like stress and time and money and stuff, it's a bit, you know, feels a bit strange. One of the conditions of being an artist in the 21st century is as people are constantly expecting you to be able to introduce your work, talk about your work, be articulate, accessible. Artists need to be able to understand what they're communicating. It's not like rubbish, it's, it's like an idea, it embodies an idea, it might be a question, it might be a problem, it might be a contradiction that's being presented which the audience has to make sense of or whatever, but it's an act of communication. I guess it's logical that people will ask me, can you tell me what this piece is about? But it's just not, it's not an easy question to answer most of the time. If I could stand here and say, yeah, this is about that time I played basketball and my uncle caught a swordfish, neither of which happened. I don't play basketball. My uncle doesn't even fish. But if you can answer an artwork in simple terms like that, I, I, I mean, I would lose all respect for you as an artist. I mean, it can't, you see it all the time, but it cannot be that simple. It's just like, for me, it's like, it's just art is much harder than that. If it were so straightforward, um, then everybody would be doing it. Oh, sorry. But art and artistic opportunity are in the eye of the beholder. So I went to uh, the neon people who generally look after my neon needs. I asked them, can you remake this thing for me as cheap as possible to fit in this window? I need it to be turned off 
And I said, but that's really strange. You're the second artist this week who asked for neon turned off. And I said, you're fucking kidding me. <laughs> who the fuck is ordering neon turned off? Because this is what I do, right? And they said, well, I don't know, this artist guy called Ryan Gander. Now, Ryan Gander is really famous. Um, but all the time I'm thinking, oh my God, Ryan Gander is making a work similar to mine with the same kind of idea as mine so what do you do i mean <laughs> this guy is he's a big name rasheen has a sneaky plan to secretly make a duplicate of the other artist's design and then exhibit it before he does so initially i will show an original roshin burn and then i'll take it down in a couple of days and show an original brian gander and somehow curating the two of them I'll try and work out actually who is the owner of this idea of Neon Turned Off. So we'll see. In some ex-council offices in South London, Melissa has finally got her studio. I've applied for the small space, knowing that the small space was going to be bigger than anything I've ever had before in terms of studio. Another two ex-Goldsmith students have persuaded the owners to let them have the site rent-free for two years. The project is basically about providing uh, affordable artist studios for recent graduates. The whole building is a combination of 55 studios and a gallery as well and project space. I mean, the thing that people need that they don't have is space and they, this was like not only is it amazing space, but you know, really beautiful spaces and interesting spaces that I think make for really interesting art shows. And so, my, so many of my friends are artists and something they can't afford are studios. But cheap studios are cheap for a reason. First, they have to build them. I love this actually, this is great. Blue's also taken a space here. It feels really good to be back in the studio, get all of my things out of the boxes that they've been packed in for the last four months and just get back to work. Just to kind of get things feeling a bit homey. Organized process. In fact, Blue's having a good week. He's going to be showing his work alongside Damien Hirst and Tracy Emin in a project by famous ex-Goldsmiths artist Michael Landy. So we were each asked to submit a work and see if it would be accepted uh, f for uh, Landy's project. And he accepted one of my uh, shells. It's a bit of a bonus uh, that um, a work gets to participate in his, his big, big project. It's a cool opportunity to, to meet Michael Landy. His project um, down on Oxford Street where he destroyed all of his possessions. It was one of the first artworks that I remember hearing of on that sort of scale. But there is a catch. Well, I call it Art Bin. It's a particularly stupid title, but it kind of does what it says on the can and I've asked artists, both known and unknown, to bring in their um, creative failures. It's really about failure and it's how people, what artists kind of interpret as failure, whether it's a formal thing or the technique hasn't worked or it was an experiment that's gone wrong or it just takes up too much space in their studio or they give up art completely or they want to recreate themselves by doing a whole new different body of works and it works at, at its best when somebody just brings in something and they throw it in themselves because they find that really quite a liberating experience.
In the material world, there's a whole hierarchy of artists that get shown in galleries or museums, how much an artist's work fetches, the value of it. But within the bin, everything's the same, so it has no value. Perfect landing as well. It's kind of just sitting there face up. <laughs> you know, the hours of work you put into that, and then just in a couple of seconds, you just chuck it as hard as you can. And you just watch the thing splinter and the, the wires go everywhere. It's, uh, yeah, it, uh, Yeah, I don't know what to say. It's a bit of a bit of a strange one. You just kind of <laughs> chucked your work into a massive uh, bin of of destroyed artworks. Well, I left uh, Goldsmiths in 1988, um, and actually, we're, we're basically the people who actually, make, I mean, in some respects, made Goldsmiths. I mean, we I mean, it's like you know, we are the founding fathers of Goldsmiths in a sense, and I think everything that stems from that in a sense was about us. But at the same time, we were kind of much more naive in our attitude, in a sense, and we're kind of making everything up as we're going along. As obviously now, um, people coming through the system, they kind of more attracted to Goldsmiths because they saw it as a kind of fast track route to becoming a successful artist. And I think at the same time, that actually ruins the course, because you know, obviously the people who actually go there are kind of motivated to do it for the wrong reasons. I think in participating in a larger project like this with a more established artist and, and larger galleries, like you, you are just participating in that kind of art community. So in a sense, even though Michael Landy is a, a bigger fish, he needs my help uh, in order to complete his project. Do you know what, I haven't had time to even look around at the show, but from what I've seen I'm really pleased with everything and I think so far it's looking better than I thought it would. Yeah, definitely. Rasheen's struggling to keep up the art alongside everything else in her life. How does a mum artist like separate parenting and creativity and how can you balance these two things and um, it's just really difficult uh, it's just really difficult you know when you invest like 10 years of your life into something you don't it's not the first thing that you ditch I mean obviously I can't ditch my child <laughs> but if there's any takers Been, uh, has been pretty amazing. It's been a constant flow of people, and um, yeah, I, d I just think that it's it's been a good opportunity uh, to to show in such a, a central location. There have been uh, quite a few people who I, I, I wanted to show up, and we've had good conversations, and so it's kind of like a, in terms of networking um, as well. A bit of a bit of networking has happened, and. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Lots of uh, lots of really positive feedback uh, about the work. The show is going fine. I think. I mean, I don't know because I haven't really spoken to anybody who would give me feedback. I'm just like catching up with friends, so that's kind of nice. Um, have I 